Hello, hello, grade 12s. Welcome back to the channel, Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist, Uabutiwa Sos Ugobela Wemets. And without any further ado, let's look at this question that we have here. Wow. Okay, so we have question six. It says the dissociation of iodine molecules to iodine atoms is a reversible reaction taking place in a cell container at 727 degrees Celsius. The balanced equation for the reaction is as follows here. So we have uh, the iodine uh, molecules that uh, react to form our iodine atoms here. So Kc uh, for the reaction at 727 degrees Celsius is 3.76 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. Now 6.1, they're saying write down the meaning of the term. So that is our definition for reversible reaction, a reaction whereby products can be converted back to reactants. Right. And then uh, we have 6.2. It says at equilibrium, the pressure of the system is increased by decreasing the volume. So what are they doing now? They are increasing the pressure. And then uh, by decreasing the volume, remember, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. Then at constant temperature, how will each of the following be affected? Choose from increases, decreases, or remains the same. 6.2.1, it's saying what will happen to the value of the equilibrium constant? We know that uh, the Kc value can only be affected by a change in temperature. So for 6.2.1, we're just going to say it remains the same, right? Because if our temperature remains constant and then they're only uh, tempering with pressure, then it won't change our Kc value because Kc value is only affected by temperature. Then 6.2.2, it says what will happen to the number of I2 molecules? So, okay, this uh, needs us to compare the coefficient ratios uh, of the reactants and the product. So on the reactant side, we can see that our coefficient here is one. So we have one gas mole. And then on the right-hand side, our coefficient is two. So that's two gas moles. Now, obviously, we know that an increase in pressure favors uh, the side or the reaction that produces less number of gas moles, right? So uh, looking at these two reactions, we can see that less number of gas moles is produced on the reactant side, which means uh, the reverse reaction is being favored. Now, if the reverse reaction is favored, we know that the number of the reactants uh, should increase. So the number of the I2 molecules would have to do what? Increase. So that increases. And then when we go to 6.3, uh, they want us to now explain uh, the answer to question 6.2.2 by referring to the Chandler's principle. So now they want us to explain why are we seeing the number of I2 molecules increase. So uh, the same reason that I said is what we're going to write here. So we're going to say an increase in pressure favors the reaction that produces uh, that produces less number of gas moles so point number one now in that case that means the reverse reaction is favored the reverse reaction is favored thus the number uh, of i2 molecules increases so that is our detailed explanation as to why we say the number of i2 molecules increases so number one we say an increase in pressure favors the reaction that always produces less number of gas moles then the reverse reaction in this case will be favored because we can see the reverse reaction is the one that produces less number of gas moles and thus the number of i2 molecules increases because remember when we favor the reverse reaction we are promoting the using up of the product in order to form back the reactants right then okay uh let's now move we have a uh, 6.4 it says at 227 degrees celsius the kc value for the reaction above is 5.6 times 10 to the exponent of negative 12. now if you can compare the two values here you will see that uh, this value here is now smaller than the initial kc value that we had there so if you can just check here in terms of your exponent we know that if we have times 10 
to the exponent of negative three, that's greater than times 10 to the exponent of negative 12. So the more uh, the, the more negative the exponent here, the smaller the number, right? But then now again, what, el what else are we, uh, are we noting is the fact that they decreased the temperature of the system. So this, uh, the KC value here, the bigger KC value was obtained at a higher temperature. Now this lower KC value is obtained at a lower temperature. Now for four marks that they are asking is the forward reaction endothermic or exothermic fully explain the answer and as you can see here uh, we are not given the heat of reaction or the enthalpy change so we cannot tell uh, that means uh, we now have to explain here so our first point will be we don't know yet whether it's endothermic or exothermic so i will try to explain and then we'll go back to that so let's first explain the observations number one the kc decreases with a decrease in temperature right now we do know one thing if kc is decreasing according to this we know that a uh, if the concentration of the product is greater than the concentration of the reactant that means forward reaction is favored so fr is for forward reaction but then if the concentration of the product happens to be smaller than the concentration of the reactants in other words the concentration of the reactants is now bigger than the concentration of the product that means reverse reaction is favored right so these are the things that we can deduce from all of this. Now, Kc decreases with a decrease in temperature, but then we know a, a decrease in temperature means that reverse reaction, reverse reaction is favored. In other words, now we'll have concentration of products being less than the concentration of the reactants. Right. But then uh, we know that a decrease in temperature because remember we just noted that there is a decrease in temperature a decrease in temperature according to our the Chandler's principle uh, a decrease in temperature favors favors the exothermic reaction the exothermic uh, reaction now if we are saying that the reverse reaction because now remember there was a decrease in temperature and the reverse reaction was favored and now we are saying a decrease in temperature favors the exothermic reaction which means uh, the reverse reaction is exothermic this then means that therefore the forward reaction the forward reaction is endothermic and then there we have it the forward reaction is endothermic then we can come here and then give our answer and say this is endothermic right and just like that uh, we have explained right so see how i try to a uh, kind of uh, note my observations first before i decide whether it's endothermic or exothermic because now if you're just gonna guess and say it's exothermic then you have to then uh, try to explain how it is exothermic and you find that exothermic is incorrect right so try to explain the observations and all of that then uh, those observations will kind of lead you to the correct answer right so that's how you were supposed to explain all of that uh, for four marks right right then let's move to 6.5 says a certain mass of iodine molecules i2 so the iodine molecules uh, this is what we have on the reactant is sealed in a 12.3 dm cube flask at a temperature of 727 degrees uh, Celsius, right? And then at that moment, our KC, we are given that it is 3.76 times 10 to the exponent of negative uh, 3. So we are going back to this KC value here. Okay, so now they're saying when equilibrium is reached, the concentration of the iodine atoms, so the iodine atoms, remember, we are talking about the products here, right? So note, these are iodine molecules, and then right here we have iodine atoms so do not confuse it then uh, calculate the initial mass of the iodine molecules in the flask we want the initial mass of the iodine molecules meaning this one here okay so now uh, this question here it's a very interesting question because this is where we're going to perform what we call the reverse calculations so what a reverse calculation it's simply uh, having to work out uh, this 
question backwards so normally we are used to having to calculate the kc but this time around we are given the kc and then we should work from the kc all the way back to the initial number of moles and then from the initial number of moles we find the initial mass of the iodine molecules so in that way we call it a reverse calculation because you are simply working everything that you know backwards right so okay um let's start with the rice table okay so now let's start uh, with our ratios uh, we have our iodine molecules here and then we have our iodine atoms so the ratios we just drop the coefficients that's one and two right and then uh what are we given we are given that um we are given that the the concentration of the iodine atoms at equilibrium so at equilibrium the concentration is 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 remember this is concentration so it has to go in here so we have 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 right but then we know if only this uh, I2 molecules were sealed into that 12.3 uh, dm cube flask, that means initially we had no products. So the products here need to be zero, right? Okay, so now this is how uh, we're going to do our reverse calculation. So we have zero here. Remember, we are given the Kc, and then we know the Kc is the concentration of the product so the product is i2 and then a uh, the product is i and then square i mean to say because of the ratio here and then over the i2 which is the reactant and then the ratio is just one okay so now that we are given the kc value let's substitute it in here remember kc is 3.7 3.76 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3. And then we are looking for the concentration of uh, the iodine molecules, but we have the concentration of the, iod oh, of the uh, iodine atoms, right? So iodine atoms, that's 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 and then square. Then the concentration we are looking for is of the iodine molecules. Now, all we have to do here is simply cross multiply here and then the, the concentration of the I2. If we say 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 square over this, right? So let me write 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 square over all of that 3.76 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 right like that then what do we find as the concentration we find that the concentration of uh, the iodine molecules will be equal to 6.102 10 to the exponent of negative 3 mole per dm cube right so this is our concentration for the iodine air uh, molecules right then we put it here 6.102 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 meaning right now we can work backwards to the number of moles of the equilibrium by saying this is our concentration and then the volume we are given as 12.3 right so if you want the number of moles right now what must we do we must say the concentration multiplied by the volume so that means we're going to take this numbers here and multiply them by 12.3 now if we say 6.102 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 multiply by 12.3 then what do we find we find 0 0.0751 and again we're going to take this number remember it's a reverse calculation so right now instead of dividing we are multiplying because we are now going back now we know that the reciprocal of divide is multiply then 4.79 times 10 to the exponent of negative 3 multiply by this 12.3 and then we get 0 0.0589 now the advice is always uh, if you have non-terminating decimals and then you are calculating your kc always try to round off to at least four decimal places so we are avoiding having to round off uh, to 
uh, decimal places whereby the answer will now be far away from the one that they have in the map. So always try to uh, round off to at least four decimal places so that you are as accurate as possible. Then, okay, but now we can find the change in the number of moles because initially we found that the products were zero. We had no products initially. But then uh, since the forward reaction in this case is favored, that means the products are being uh, formed, right? So remember, we are still here. We are still here whereby we have a KC that is greater. So if the case is greater, that means at that time, uh, we still have our forward reaction being favored. And then we can also see uh, the evidence of that because they only put the iodine molecules in there. But then at a later stage, they found that the product had formed, right? So that means uh, we had the concentration of the product increasing. So that's 0 0.0589. Okay, and then in this case, we know that in order to find uh, the value a change, this is where we relate this to the ratio block. Remember, when we want to find the number of moles on the change block, we now use the ratios. Now, the ratio is 1 is to 2, so that means what are we going to do? Take this number here, multiply by 1, then divide by 2, right? So the ratio of 1 is to 2 is suggesting that this number here must be half on this block because for every uh, one one mole that reacts, two moles of uh, the iodine atoms are being formed, right? So uh, that means at this point, when I have that multiplied by this divided by 2, and then this is going to give us 0 0.0. 295. But then how do we get to this point now, the initial point? Remember, we know that for the reactants, if ever we wanted uh, the number of moles at equilibrium, we were going to say I minus C is equals to E. But now that we want the number of moles initially, then it's simple. We just make I the subject of the formula, then it will become C plus E. So now the C becomes a positive because uh, it jumps over to that other side. Now that means to find the number of moles initially, we need to take the number of moles on the change plus the number of moles on the, uh, at equilibrium. Then when we add those ones up, we get 0 0.1045, right? Now at this point, we can see that we now have the initial number of moles of the iodine molecules. But then let's go back. What are they? What do they want us to find? The initial mass, not the initial number of moles. So that means we still need to do something from here. Obviously, what we need to do at this point now is to uh, use our formula, which goes n is equals to small m over big M, and then we have n the uh, to find the mass. So we can just a uh, try to manipulate this formula so that there will be the mass number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. So what is the number of moles? Initially, we have 0 0.1045. So if we want the initial mass, then we have to use the initial number of moles. Then multiply that by what? So we're going to multiply that uh, by the molar mass of the iodine molecules. So we have two of those uh, iodine uh, molecules there. So this means iodine from the periodic table, we know it to be uh, 127 grams per mole. If we have two of them, then, then that means multiplied by two. 127 multiplied by two will give us 254. So to find uh, the mass of initial mass of the iodine molecules, we just have to multiply this. And then uh, that will give us 26 point five four three grams right and then that's how we were supposed to find uh, that value there so there we go so there we go okay so now uh, just like that uh, we have found our mess that's how you were supposed to tackle this question here for a whooping nine marks so note that it's a reverse calculation Play this video as many times as possible and just try to understand uh, the approach that I took into solving that one. But then with all that being said, please press the thumbs up button if you've enjoyed the lesson, then you've found it helpful. And if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed yet, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. 
but most importantly, please share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team.